G'day everyone, sorry for the interruption, we'll be back to the video in a second. Just wanted to say if you're watching this because you're working from home or perhaps you're on lockdown at home and stuck there and you're looking for tech content, hopefully you enjoy this and hopefully you use this time to improve upon your own tech skills. But most importantly, stay safe, stay healthy and be mindful and respectful of, of the needs of others in this time. Anyway, on to the video. Instance caging. What do we mean by instance caging in the context of the Oracle database? Instance caging is very simple. It's about slicing up the pie. And what do I mean by the pie here? In my case, I'm talking about the most precious resource, the thing that you get charged on for Oracle, the CPU. It's very rare nowadays that we have a single database on a server. Servers are so ridiculously powerful that we generally have lots of databases on them. I know customers that consolidate literally thousands of servers that were 10, 15 years old onto a single Exadata machine. It's ridiculous what a high powered server can do in terms of database volume nowadays. It's one of the motivations for pluggable databases. But let's assume we have a single server and it's got two databases on it. One's called sales. It's what drives our business. It's the retail operation. It is the single most important database in our organization. It controls whether we make a profit each year. Then we have another database called Social Club. Now, as the name suggests, it's where people put their fun activities they're gonna do as employees, etc. It would be a bit of a disaster if someone ran a rogue query on the Social Club database that slowed down your sales database. But out of the box, that's how databases work. They all have an equal footing, an equal right to grab CPU attention from the server. So all it needs is some bad code, bad design, some, you know, some poor analysis in our social club database, and that could actually cause all sorts of problems for your sales database. What we wanna do is be able to control what slice of the pie each of those databases get, such that our sales database is always guaranteed to have some level of control. So let's do it with a demo. Let's, I'm gonna use my trusty PC as a server and see what we can do in terms of controlling the CPU allocation to a database. This machine has six cores and they're hyperthreaded, so the CPU count by default comes out at 12 on this machine. Now I'm gonna smash this poor old machine. I'm gonna literally start off a whole stack of routines that are just doing primary key lookups, just in an endless loop. In fact, when I hit return, you'll see a whole stack of windows appear. So some of them won't appear on your screen here, but you can get the idea that each one is just basically going around an endless loop doing primary keys. I'm not sure how good the microphone is, but rest assured the fan on my machine has just gone ballistic. Now, if I bring up Task Manager, you can get a rough idea what my machine is doing at the moment. It is absolutely stressing. You can see we're pegged at 100%. If we look down here at utilization, we're at 97, 98%. Let's assume this is my social club database. I have just totally consumed the entire server with my bad programming here. The salespeople are gonna be jumping up and down because they don't get a slice of the pie. I'm hurting the critical database on my system. Let's kill these off before too much damage gets done. And the fan on my machine returns to normal. So instance caging is how I can guard against this. I'm gonna run a second demo here now, which is the exact same set of processes, but as an administrator, I wanna make sure that my social club database cannot harm the machine. As we saw before, my CPU count is at currently at 12, but what I can do with Oracle is change the CPU count just at the initialization level to two. And as you can see, I can do it without having to bounce the database. I can dynamically change this to whatever I like. Now in this social club database, I've said you are capped at a CPU count of two. Let's now crank up the same amount of work still just as many concurrent sessions, absolutely trying to smash my machine. Notice now, even though I'm trying to do the same amount of work, I'm only using about 50% CPU. It would actually be a little bit less. This Obviously, we're actually doing a recording here and recording some video as well. That's also contributing to this overall CPU. But you can see I've got a lot more headroom left over now, plenty of space left over for my critical sales database to get that slice of the pie. That is instance caging in a nutshell we can actually divide up resources just using the CPU count parameter 
to make sure that particular instances on a machine don't chew up too much information, too much CPU pie. So I, I can choose this dynamically. I might have my sales get to top priority through the whole day. But overnight, when I got, for example, big batch loads going to my data warehouse, I might crank up the data warehousing stuff to get more CPU and lower the sales. I have that nice flexibility. So it's pretty cool. One thing I should state is instance caging only comes into effect if you have a resource manager plan set. So if your resource manager plan parameter is null, you'll see no impact from instance caging. You can set CPU count to whatever you want. It won't change anything. So resource manager plan must be set. If you don't have one, you can simply set it to default underscore plan, which is the one that comes out of the box. And that will guarantee that instant caging pops in and works.